Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today I am finally feeling better. That's right, I finally recovered from the man flu and we're back with today's video. And in today's video we have a brand new episode of the Rangers Roundup series. Now, if you've never seen this before, it's where I take all the tricklets of Rangers news and I just throw them in a video. Sort of round them up, hence the name. So without any further ado, let's dive into story number one then, shall we? And it's a bit of transfer news regarding a transfer out, and this is none other than Josh McPake. Now, as briefly mentioned on the channel just recently, there were some rumblings about Josh McPake going down to a team in the Championship. Now, I know a lot of you were like me, just didn't let it be Dundee United. Well, to be fair, we couldn't have gone any closer to Dundee United, to be fair, just about six or seven steps down the freaking road, but Josh McPake has joined Dundee on a six-month loan. Spoiler alert, I really like this move, and I really rate it by the Rangers development manager who has picked Dundee as a team to go and develop, which is a tremendously talented football player like Josh McPake, because Dundee's a team that's second in the league. Now, I know there's only been two games played, right? And that sounds silly, but they are a team that's expected to do well in the championship and be on top most games and win most games throughout the entire year. And that's the atmosphere we want our players to be learning that, because when they come back to Rangers, that's the pressure they have when they pull on the Rangers shirt. There isn't a wee FA performance here and it's fine. You need to be a constant performer and you need to deal with the pressure of being able to win every single match. So I really, really rate this loan move for young McPake. Now, just in case you are new to the channel and you have missed us discussing Josh McPake before, the best way to describe this laddie is just pure and utter football and skill. And I honestly find him so unique these days, especially in Scottish football, because we didn't really get boys that like doing ball skills and be a five-star skiller if you play any of the computer games or like that. But Josh McPake is, he's all about fancy touches here or there, little flips, step-overs, that is his game and he honestly had a transitional year last year where he just took his game to a complete and utter level because there was always glimpses of the talent but last year he absolutely exploded not only did he impress the entire staff but he went ahead and won the academy player of the year and let me just say there's a lot of very talented players at the academy level for him to win that actually means a lot. But what I love about Josh McPake now is you didn't need to just take my word for it. I didn't need to just tell you and you guys need to either believe or disbelieve me. The man has showed just how good and skillful he is. You go back to pre-season, his first time playing in the first team for Rangers versus Bury. Now I know it's a friendly but still it's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of bodies there watching him. What did he do with the first time he basically touched the football? He tried the Berbatov step over spin move, skint the Bury defender and nearly got a world day of an assist. That's the confidence and skill of this young man. And truth be told, I have been a little bit disappointed we've not seen him more integrated enough to the first team this season, especially like the second leg versus St. Joseph. We just had the most recent cup game versus East Fife. But it all now makes sense why he's not been thrown into the deep end. It's because this move has been on the cards for a long time and it was pretty much guaranteed just over the weekend when he was actually there watching Dundee play Aberdeen. In the Scottish Cup. And I just want to get ahead of this very, very early and rule out this is not a case of another maybe talented or a player with potential being loaned out by Rangers, sort of with narrow view or of never coming back to the first team. I want to rule that out right away because pretty much every single staff member gleams from ear to ear whenever they talk about this laddie. And we've seen what Gerard said about him, we know how highly he rates him. This is definitely a development style loan, not the end of his young career at Rangers. And just to confirm, this lad has a future at Rangers as long as his mind's right and he develops well and sticks in at his time in Dundee. He was given a three-year deal just a couple weeks ago. That doesn't happen very often at Rangers. I mean, Ryan Hardy was fed one-year contracts for a very long time. We saw that with a couple of other youngsters. This lad's been tied down for the long term and that is a statement in itself. And with that being said, we've now reached the end of story number one, he joins Dundee for six months and based on game time and everything like that, that could potentially be stretched out for the rest of the season. But I'm pretty sure Josh McPake will be going there and be starting most games because that is a position that Dundee needed to strengthen and boy, have they strengthened with a very talented player. So best of luck to Josh. That is my opinions on the move. Now it's time to hand over the reins and give it to you guys. What do you think about this loan move to Dundee? Is it the right club? Is a championship the place for Josh McPake? Or would you have preferred him to continue to develop at Rangers in the academy? Dive into the comment section and get your thoughts out there. Will you guys do that though? I will jump over to Twitter and here 
from the people. So over to Twitter then, there's been 1,037 votes. Thank you so much for getting involved. Now, I just asked, do you agree with the decision by the club to loan out McPake to Dundee? 96 percent of the people votes for yes they agree which is by far the biggest swing in a poll we've ever had assassin writes in gutted to see him go wanted him to come up against teams like hamilton to get top flight experience cj fair enough that's already a different view sort of from the poll alfredo not that one writes in first team action for mcpake what the man needs ranger zone writes in andy dallas show doing it in the championship is so much harder than at reserve level what a tweet that is. Will well, be great for him to go and challenge himself and get game time. Mega Mike writes in, he'll light up the championship for them, CJ. He'll benefit so much from regular first team football in a competitive environment. He'll be fighting for a spot in our first team within the next two years, definitely. Tom Phillips writes in, yes, he's not ready yet. Gets him used to playing against men and in front of a crowd. Good move for the young man. And the last one we read it comes from Stephen Brown and he writes in, I agree with the move because he'll get more first team experience rather than being just in the reserve league squad and barely making the bench. One for the future so alone is a good move for him. So it looks like we're mostly in agreement that a loan to Dundee is a good move for Josh McPake but again if you feel differently that is why the comment section is there. Now though, we turn to story number two and I'm going to be honest with you, this one could make me a little bit ranty. And just in case that deliciously clickbaity tail has a given away, it's about none other than Philippe Hollander. But before we speak about the main reason why Hollander is in the news today and obviously being the latest in breaking news, there is something else I want to talk about and this is where maybe the more rant will come out in me because it feels to me, again this is just my opinion, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but it feels like people are lining up, like the media and the journalists and everything like that, lining up for this guy to fail so they can label him as a flop. Honestly, the amount of journalist tweets that I've read and these wee media jabs at this guy already is truly frightening. Now, it was bad enough that they were doing that when he wasn't playing, but based on his first 90 minutes of action of Rangers, they've just sort of came out at once and been started doing little jabs and dabs at the guy. And it just confuses me so much because, again, no disrespect to East Fife, I know it's not the toughest opposition that he will face, but still, you only can beat what's in front of you and what he did in his first official start at the football club is play 90 minutes, get a clean sheet, get an assist and maybe get a goal. Again, the goal part is still up for discussion but either caused the goal or got the goal, alright? It was still his movement. What mere could you want from a centre half throughout 90 minutes of freaking football? But enough ranting from me anyway, let's move on from that then, shall we? And discuss why Hollander is in the news this week and why he has made it onto the Rangers Roundup. Now I've got to warn you, this one's a bit of a weird story and by weird I mean hefty, hefty awkward because after his performance versus East Fife, they asked him a lot of questions and everything like that and he answered it very, very typically by a football player who's not playing a lot of football right now. He's working hard and he's waiting for his opportunity and he's looking forward to playing in European football. This is the part the awkwardness comes in by the way, this, this part right here. Less than 24 hours after saying that, Hollander has been omitted from the European squad. He's been taken out and replaced. Now again, I'm sure you already know this, but if you're not registered for the first leg, you can't obviously take part in the second leg, no matter what happens overall. So as you can imagine, as Rangers are playing pretty damn well right now, and there's not many negatives you can actually talk about Rangers, especially on the field, they have been truly brilliant. The press and some media outlets have decided to flip this and turn it up to 10 in the old temperature and try to make a mountain out of this molehill. Some suggesting that Lennon's under fire for not playing that big tall guy who just sits on the bench when they get knocked out the Champions League. Well, Gerard can do it for his big money signing and no one cares. People are saying there's difference in the way it's been reported and all this BS. And for me, I honestly didn't see anything wrong with what's been done so far this season. I don't think he's been hard done by. I don't think he's flopped. The guy has literally came in three weeks behind every other player in this squad, it's took him a bit of time to adjust to not only Scottish football, but to adjust to the, 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 the way that Gerard plays, the fast pace, the in your face, he's not used to that playing in the Serie A, so it's been a bit of a learning curve for the guy, but listen, it's no April, it's freaking August. Now is it a bit of a shame and a bit embarrassing for him after saying that he, he wants to be a part of the European squad to be taken out, yes it's a little bit embarrassing and yes it's a little bit of a shame for him, but this is Rangers Football Club. Not daddy daycare. We right now as a football club, especially the centre halves, are playing absolutely brilliantly. It's not as if he's been dropped for off the field stuff and that's why he's flopping. 
two guys ahead of him is just playing untouchable right now. And here on the channel, I wanted to give you an actual proper update regarding the European selections because they're all talking about Hollander because that's fun, that's easy. There's a fee there that they can click bait and try and make it look like a flop. But also, Greg Dockery was also omitted from the European squad. And Andy King and Barker has replaced them for the next two European games to try and get to the dance because let's not forget they've just been admitted from this qualifying round once we get to the group stages which again hopefully we do it then opens up and Hollander can then fight for his spot once again it's not doom and gloom and the guy hasn't been cut from the Rangers squad just because he's not been selected for one European qualifier. But that's my thinking on the Hollander situation. It's been a very long time since me and these just had a genuine conversation about a Rangers player because all the videos have been really structured and been like predictions and recaps for the last little while because it's been so busy on the channel. But let's just sit back as fans and have a discussion and a talk about a Rangers player and Hollander. What are you thinking about him? And also, how do you feel about the media just starting to show their true colours a little bit and start singling them out because there's nothing else to moan about? regarding Rangers. Now as it has been a little while since the last episode of the Rangers Roundup, just in case you don't know, the third and final topic as always picked by you guys, one in the nation on Twitter. So let's jump over and see what the question or the discussion point of this week's episode is. And this week's question from the people to the people comes from Andrew Wilson and he writes in Greg Taylor, yes or no. Now, if I'm honest with you, there's about six or seven other people that asked all about Greg Taylor, so there seems to be a lot of discussion regarding the left-back spot at Rangers right now. Is Greg Taylor from Kamarnock the man to strengthen that position? What do you think? I will dive in at the comments and discuss it there with you. And that's the end of this week's Rangers Roundup. Hopefully you did enjoy it and got involved in the stories that were selected. Before we wrap up, I need to give a massive thank you to the absolute legends on the Patreon's account. However, I cannot thank you guys enough. And as always, I've been CJ Novo 92. Thank you so much for watching and bye bye.